Hey, what's going on everyone? Don here and you're watching VR Gamer Dude and today it's an exciting day at the studio, man. We, it's always an exciting day when we get to add a new headset to the collection back there. So today we are going to be getting our first look at the DPVR E4 and you know I can't thank DPVR enough for sending this out to the studio so I could review it for you guys. So what are we going to do in this video? We're, we're going to go ahead and get it unboxed. We'll take a look at everything that's in here. We're going to go ahead and get it set up in Steam VR, and then I'm going to test it out in some gameplay and give you my final thoughts. So, let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what's inside the box. So, all right, the box itself, I, I gotta say, it, it really looks nice here. I, it's got the white packaging, the clear image of the headset and the controllers with the DPVR logo. Uh, so, very nice. But we don't wanna talk about the box, we wanna talk about what's inside of it, right? So, let's go. All right, oh, nice vacuum seal. Nice, strong vacuum seal there, and pop, there we go. That's always my favorite part when it first pops, and there we have it. There is the DPVR E4. So, all right, in here, we've got the headset, we've got the controllers, looks like we've got some sort of a, a dongle and a box. So we'll start with the box here. So let's see, let's see what's in the box. All right, so there we go, and all right, we've got our DPVR instruction book, and man, that is thick and lengthy, so probably many, many languages in there. Uh, we've got our DPVR warranty card, all right, and let's see. And then all of our cabling. So power supply. Uh, now this is a wired Steam VR headset. I, so obviously it's going to be kind of akin to. Looks like with this setup, looks like it's going to kind of be akin to the way Pimax was originally, or the the way the uh, the Reverb G2 does, where where you've got the little dongle where you've got to plug in the power supply to it. So you know, no, no problems there. Uh, looks like the uh, the cord is nice and long here um so all right very cool um so all right let's take a look at the headset itself so uh with the headset here uh it's a nice white plastic um uh, top strap here seems to be kind of a rubberized material uh very very stretchy but feels very strong so it looks like we've also got yes this is where this is going to plug in so very very similar to what we saw in like the reverb g2 so all right Let's go ahead and lift this guy out, but we're going to take a look at these first. So we'll just take one of them. So, all right, um, very lightweight. Um, uh, the plastic feels, eh, I wouldn't call it cheap. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming once the batteries are in it, it's going to have a little bit more weight to it. Uh, but, um, you know, interesting that, that now we are seeing this style adopted. So it's, it's almost like controller parity is starting to happen, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, I really like that. So, um, you know, overall... I guess those feel pretty good. Um, you know, the stick placement is is nice. The the the, the thumb placements here are, are, are all really good. So um, you've got the, uh, the the grips. I mean, it, it feels very familiar. So once again, not hating on controller parity. So all right, um, now on to the star of the show here. So we've got the DPVR E4 headset, and you know. <laughs> I say I kind of like this this like uh, iridescent look on the front here. Um, it it kind of gives it a little space ageness, and 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 you know the fact that they did the flip up halo strap design. So haven't seen that since one of like say my uh, the old Windows Mixed Reality like the Acer or something like that. But it was always handy because you know I mean you could just flip it up and there you go. I mean you know you're interacting with the real world okay guys i'm back to vr and boom there you go so 
headset, just like the controllers. Uh, plastic uh, it, it's definitely a nice hard plastic, but but it it, it feels so light that that I don't know. It's it's almost like. Once again, I don't want to say it feels cheap. Um, it definitely doesn't feel cheap, but it, it, it just feels very, very lightweight. So, all right, um, let's take a look here. Uh, looks like we've got a nose flap uh, built in here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of these nose flaps. I don't like anything touching my nose, and I like to be able to see underneath the nose gap. Um, the, the 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 rubber here um, definitely hoping that that yeah that that does seem to pop off there uh, looks like it's got some just little tabbies there that, that knock it into place so hopefully we can mod some sort of another uh, face covering here I'm not a big fan of that soft silicon I, I'm more of a, a cloth face cover kind of guy um, the padding feels uh, nice uh, it, it, it doesn't feel feel you know too thick it doesn't feel too thin um, it's interesting how they've included some side padding on here uh, on the sides of the headset so that that's kind of a, a feature that I don't see a lot um, in other headsets so um, looks like the lenses uh, lenses look very familiar to you know say your quest 2 uh, so all right, um, I think the next thing to do would be to go ahead and get the software installed uh, and get it set up in Steam VR. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we've got it out of the box, we've only got one more step before we can actually get to playing, and that's to grab some software. So we're going to want to go ahead and come to dpvr.com, and then we're going to go ahead and go to the downloads and the support tools, and then just go ahead and grab this dpvr assistant here. Now, once we get that installed, that is going to be the bridge for Steam VR. I, I kind of like your Pimax or your your Windows Mixed Reality or your Meta headsets, this one doesn't just plug in and work natively with Steam VR. It does require a third-party software in order to do that. So we're going to go ahead and get the assistant set up here, and that's going to allow us to continue. All right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test of the PC. And everything is supported. And go ahead and install it in the normal directory here. And boom, there we go. Nice little graphic and some music. <laughs> Interesting. Now don't contemplate, no time to think Let your body just lose control All you gotta really do is just bust the move And then let the good times roll now, Yeah, let those good times roll Rock the place, then you can now all lift your hands You can be precise and do whatever you like Cause you can turn it all the day Yeah, yeah, jump and jump and Get jump and Get jump and So, gotta say, that was actually a nice little touch in the installer here. I, you know, at least it doesn't kind of leave you bored. So, okay. There we go. Looks like it's finished here. All right, so it looks like we've reached the point in the setup where it wants us to learn a little bit about the headset, and I think that's because we're about to plug it in for the first time. So looking at this, it is a four camera tracking system, pretty standard, you know, similar to like say the Quest 2. Not gonna knock them on that. I, I do like it sometimes when they have the cameras here on the side because that does give you a little wider range of motion uh, for the controllers without them dropping out. But we'll do a little testing on that when we get to gameplay. Play. What's interesting about this is going to be the cabling. Okay, so you know the cabling itself, you obviously got to have that for high-end PC VR. We all know that, but other headsets like the Pimax 8KX, you've got the, the the single fiber optic cable where it's just a single display port, single USB. This one, it's actually got to plug into the wall. So. 
not going to lie, that that is a little cumbersome. It's, it's a little inconvenient, especially like for times that I want to take the headset on the go and I may not have a place to plug in or, you know, times when I, I like even right here in my own studio, I don't have any free plugs in some of the places that I might want to use this. So, you know, DPVR, you might look into a possibility of maybe doing a cabling with the dual USBs. I've seen that on some other headsets. It, it, it definitely is helpful. Uh, I know it pulls a little more power from the PC, but you know, let's face it, if we're doing high-end PC VR, we've probably got some pretty monster rigs that we're connecting this stuff to. So, all right, with that said, the cabling itself, it, it is pretty standard, but pretty heavy duty. Uh, it's about a 12 foot cable, so they give you a good length to, that you can kind of get away from the PC. Uh, the, the hardware on it, I mean, super heavy duty here at the connection point to the PC. You've got another box here where you're actually going to plug in that power adapter, and then you've got your standard, you know, display port and USB 3.0 connection. So I've got it connected to the PC. Let's go ahead and plug in. And go ahead and screw that down here. Oh, looks like, yep, there we go. And E4 headset has been connected. Very nice. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next step here. Okay, so there we go, and we have been connected, and here we go. We can actually set the screen refresh rate. Now, I do like that, you know, because obviously if you have a little bit of a lower spec PC, you can set it down to the 72 or 90 hertz if you can take that. Some people are a little sensitive to it. I personally am not. Uh, now, obviously, you know, if you have a, a high-end PC and what it's, it's looked like it's detected me at, you're going to run it at the full 4K 120 hertz mode so all right we're gonna go ahead and stick with that and go next okay there we go and I've already taken off the protective film there so all right now a little bit about the controllers so you know looking at the controllers I, I, I will say and I said it in the uh, unboxing portion and intro I really like the parody uh, that we're starting to see in these controllers. So, you know, obviously they, they, they look almost identical to the Quest 2's controller. I mean, there you go. I mean, side by side, you can see, I mean, it, it, the E4 here is obviously a little slimmer in the uh, thumb area. doesn't have any wasted space up here at the top. So it's all very compact. Now, you know, side by side, when I was taking them out, I said, you know, uh, do they feel cheap or do they feel light? Now I've got the batteries in them. And, you know, I got to say, they, they feel almost the same. I actually had my wife, Stacy, put them both in her hands. And she was like, wow, you know, uh, she actually liked the E4 controller a little better because she said that it fit her thumbs better where I can now kind of see what she's talking about there's not as much thumb drift in between the sticks and the buttons so I have to make less movement in there so I'm not constantly kind of getting that that carpal feeling here so you know very cool I, I gotta say so far haven't used them yet but just on the feel and the weight I like the controllers. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and go next. And there we go. So we're going to go ahead and connect to the controllers. And it's go. Ahead, it's just found those. All right. Okay, so it just started talking to me. Interesting. So it looks like it wants me to put on the headset for the first time here. So, all right, there we go. And okay, so at this point, I know I'm not connected to the PC. You guys can't see what I'm seeing. It's just basically asking me to either walk around the room or, or, or look in a, a complete circle here to kind of scan my environment. environment there we go. And it says that that has been completed. Please look down to see if the virtual ground height is correct. Okay. If the is correct, you can touch the controller on the ground to adjust. There we go. So very, very similar here in this part of the setup. Ground height has been confirmed. Okay, and she's telling me the ground height has been confirmed. So now we're gonna set a play area, which I mean for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna draw a big circle. Yep. There we go. 
Alright. The in-situ boundary has been set up. The rooms... The in-situ boundary. into the immersive new world. Okay, so she wants me to start the VR game of Dive Into the Immersive World. All right, so now that everything's connected to the PC, let's take a quick look at the DPVR Assistant here. So this is your launcher software. This is, this is kind of the bridge between the headset and Steam VR. So it is a Steam VR headset, but it's not going to directly connect like when you start Steam. You are going to have to start this software first, very similar to, you know, like I said, earlier your your reverb g2 or any of the windows mixed reality headsets or your meta headsets or you know anything that's not an index or a vive at this point so no big deal there you just start the software, you start Steam VR, you're on to playing. And the software also gives us the ability to kind of fine tune and control the headset here a little bit. So as you can see, it, it, it's right here on the, uh, the first page here, it's gonna tell me that I've got some sort of update and it looks like it's a firmware update for the headset. Not, not, you know, weird out of the box. Sometimes they do have firmware updates right out of the box. So, you know, that's cool. You've got the uh, hamburger menu here where it's actually looking at your hardware setup, your room setup, which we've already done, and your general settings. In your general settings, one thing I did want to mention is your display brightness here. And, and the reason I mentioned that is, is when I first put this on a second ago during the setup, I thought something was wrong because the screen brightness was like way low, everything looked washed out came in here, set that baby up, and boom. I mean, everything got clear and bright. So if you get this headset and you experience that out of the box and you're thinking something's wrong, just adjust your brightness. It makes a world of difference. So in here, we've also got the different modes I mentioned earlier. You've got your 72 hertz, 90 hertz, 120 hertz. It is a 4K screen. It is a single 4K screen though, so you do your IPD adjustment through software. There is no physical IPD adjustment on this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I do prefer having a true physical IPD. I've got a nice range, but you know, others don't. And it is nicer when you can actually have dual screens in your headset and set that IPD right to what you need it. But we're gonna go in there, we're gonna set it in software, and we're gonna see how clear it looks. So, all right, let's go. Okay, so there we go. All right, so it looks like I've got some sort of a green thing kind of coming at me here. So it says, uh, please look at the green hexagon in front of you and push the joystick of the controller left and right to adjust until the most comfortable. So this is a default to 63.5. Um, looks like, let's see here. And that's it. Yeah, 65.8. And that's actually perfect. That is my true IPD. So, all right, uh, you know, I, I will say the, the, the IPD at least looks nice and clear in here. Um, yeah, all right, let's move on. Now, you've got your controllers here. Those have standard options, just like your, your Quest controllers do. The double tap's gonna give you either, you know, centering your view, you're gonna have the see-through option. Uh, so you are gonna have some sort of pass-through in this headset as well. Um, light is referring to your lighthouses. Uh, I'm not in the area where the headset can see the lighthouses just yet. So that's probably why we're getting that error at this point. Um, and then, you know, the rest is just about troubleshooting, stuff like that. So, all right, um, let's go ahead and get that firmware updated. And then I'm going to jump into Steam VR and we'll start uh, giving you some thoughts on the headset itself. All right, you know, wow. First impressions, not bad. Uh, you know, I always jump right here into this Steam VR home when I get a new headset because I've been coming here for the last seven years testing headsets. And 
I gotta say, the DPVR E4 has just made a decent first impression. It it, it looks good. I, you know, I'm a visual guy, so that's the first thing I look at with a headset is is what do the visuals look like? And you know, the the 4K screen here is doing magic. It's it's there's there's very 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 minimal sde and i mean i've got to like strain to see it uh and only way in the background uh so so clarity wise it's decent i can read text over here no problem uh the colors are not bad they could be a little more poppy in my opinion but they're not muted or washed out uh so you know i gotta say clarity is decent the, the brightness obviously we talked about that earlier i've got that set up and now that i've got that set up it is not looking dark or washed out at all so um you know gotta say pretty impressed with the screen overall now you know obviously the other thing i look for is the fov and uh, i've been spoiled i've been using you know headsets like the pimax akx and this one on paper said it had a 116 degree fov and you know i'm not going to pull out a measuring tape or anything but i can definitely tell you from my time using wide fov headsets this is definitely plus 110 uh, yeah, it definitely has that Pimax on small uh, feel where, where it's bigger than most commercial headsets that I've seen out there. Uh, definitely bigger than the index. Uh, so yeah, it, nice wide field of view, nice tall field of view. It, it, it doesn't feel like I'm looking through binoculars. So not hating on that at all. So visuals are good. FOV is good. What about the comfort? Well, I gotta say, I'm actually really digging the comfort on this headset. So far in this recording, because I've done it about a thousand times that you guys haven't seen, um, <laughs> I've been wearing this headset for well over an hour and it is not bothering me at all. I'm loving this this halo design i've always been a fan of this design with the rubber top strap that that's kind of new the stretchy rubber here very soft it's not pulling on my hair uh all the padding is nice uh i i, I once again am loving the flip up display uh so <laughs> set the glasses on there we go um but uh you know the one thing i was concerned about comfort wise when i was doing the unboxing and i mentioned it was the face mask here and i'm normally not a fan of these these soft silicone face masks i i don't like the way that they feel against my skin i've kind of got sensitive skin and I'm happy to say this one is not bad. Even the nose flaps, which normally bother me as well, I'm not feeling them. And I think one of the reasons for that is, is similar to the Quest Pro, I can tell you this thing is not smushing against my face. It's kind of more just hanging in front of my face. And I'm really starting to love that design. I've, got, I've gotten really spoiled with my Quest Pro. So one experiment I might do is taking this off to see if it is just the hang in front of my face design. And, and then it gives me that peripheral vision um, and boom, then the FOV kind of feels a little more expanded. So you know, that is something I might uh, look into and you know, you'll get my uh, thoughts on that in the uh, article that I'm going to write over on VRGamerDude.com. So, all right, clarity and vision are good. FOV is good. Comfort is good. What's left? Well, uh, you know, audio. Um, this has the piped audio through the strap design, and you guys are probably hearing a little feedback from that in the, the microphone here. Uh, you might not, I don't know, uh, because I am also recording from the microphones on the E4 here. So I have not heard it yet, um, so it's going to be interesting when I get over there and start doing the editing to hear what the actual microphones sound. Again, going to put all of this 
you know, in much deeper perspective into a full review over on my website, vrgamerdude.com. Go over there, show it some love. It is new, um, but man, I could use your support. So, all right, audio, it sounds good. This has some 3D audio in this background, some cars honking and sirens and things like that. And, you know, I've heard it a billion times in a billion headsets, and I can tell you the piped audio is going to sound pretty good. Um, we're going to definitely check it out in some games as well. But for the moment, just sitting here in my Steam VR home with the, with the little 3D audio track playing in here, not bad. Uh, not bad at all. So... All right, I think that kind of sums up my first impressions of the DPVR E4 here. So let's get to some final thoughts. All right, so you know, I gotta say, actually, as you just saw, my first impressions of the DPVR E4 here are good. So, what are my long term impressions? Because, woo, it's been a passage of time. You guys don't even know it, but a couple of weeks have passed now, and I've been playing with this thing mostly almost every night. And I gotta tell you, I am really surprised at the quality of the DPVR E4 here. Everything that I said in my first impressions is still holding up as far as the visuals, the, the audio. I mean, everything is really decent with this headset. The weight, the comfort, the visuals, the audio. Did have a few problems over the couple of weeks that I've been using it with, you know, some tracking issues here, like, and it's mostly a content creator issue. I'm sure a lot of people won't have this, but as you see here, I'm using it in a, in a big green cube. And, and when I would face that back wall, I would lose tracking because it was just a big solid colored surface. So I added all those little X's all over the place and that, that tended to help. And, you know, so if you're using this in an area with a huge solid colored surface where there's no clutter on it, posters, pictures, anything. You know, I just throw a couple of things on the wall. It, it will help with the tracking. When I used it in my living room in the main brunt of the studio here where all the, the, the clutter is, I never really had those problems. So I'm not going to really knock them on that. Otherwise, tracking to the controllers was good. Everything was, was tight and it, it worked surprisingly better than I thought with just the, the, the little four camera system here. So I got to tell you, only other thing was, you know, a little shift when I was moving my head and that's just because the, the, the headset is so light and man, tiny little bit of light leak coming from here, which I could mod something to fix that. So overall, th this is a solid headset. It's a solid PC VR headset, performs well, looks good, decent onboard audio. So if you want to learn more about it, I am going to throw links in the description and there will be a full technical review on my new website, vrgamerdude.com coming up soon. So be on the lookout for that. But for me, I think that's going to do it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. If you made it this far, you know I love it when you do that. It helps me out. And if this was your first time coming by, I can't thank you enough for coming by to check out what I do here at VR Gamer Dude. And if you want to help me out even further, do me a few solids on your way out the door, man. Hit subscribe, smash that like, and ring the bell so you get notified the next time I do something cool in in virtual reality and if you did all that all that already guys i love you thank you so much for helping me to grow the channel head on over to the website check that out as well but for me i'm out i'll see you in the next one i'm gonna go play some more vr in the e4 here peace